Hey there. I'm back, Claudia Lash, with a little bit more on machine quilting. I am doing some, I'm doing work on a flower hug today. Some of you know I make these flower hugs to send to people that are facing some difficult things. And on the back, there is a, a note that says, I'm thinking about you and, you know, I hope you feel better kind of thing. On this side, as I was working on this today, I thought, you know, as, as I work on different things, I think, I don't know if I've mentioned this before. So this may be things you've already heard, but if not, or if so, forget it. Don't worry about it, but maybe you'll uh, get another tip. One of the first things I do at, after I have this all ready to quilt, um, when I quilt it, I use some different stitches. So I use my walking foot or a even feed foot to do a blanket stitch around some of the parts, like just around the flower around the leaves and that is easy to do because you have a something that's there's a backing here so it's I don't need to have any extra thickness in there to have that blanket stitch work very nicely then I keep the walking foot on and use the walking foot just to do quilting around the main things and this time I decided I would instead of quilt when I quilt around it I usually do it in like a white or a something that matches the background but this time I thought you know I'm going to try using yellow thread so I did my quilting in yellow thread around the edge and I thought you know it's not distracting and when you get to the free motion quilting part, it's, it's really difficult for me to, if I'm using a white thread or a light thread on white fabric, trying to see where I have been and where I haven't been. So if I have a little color in my thread, it makes it a little bit easier for me to see. So. First of all, I'll do all of the things with my walking foot, and then I take the walking foot off, and I put on my free motion foot, which is just a foot that has an open, well, mine is an open toe. I put the feed dogs down on my machine, and I go to my tension, and change usually I change my bobbin tension um, or t I change my tension on the machine the top thread tension not the bobbin tension I take it down because the thread that I have in my bobbin is like a 60 weight or maybe even no I think it's a 60 weight this uh, quilting thread is thicker but I don't when I'm free motion quilting I'm not sure how it's going to look, so I don't want that bobbin to be pulled up. Okay, and then before I do the free motion part, I have my machine all set up, but before you do that, I think about what am I going to quilt? And sometimes I want to come up with something that is very elaborate or whatever, this is what these, this paper is for. This is scrap paper that I use just for fiddling around before I do something. So that's what I did here. I decided, you know, I don't have a lot of time today. I'm just going to do something that I do pretty often, and that's just swirls. So I will take a pencil and I will just do some swirls and say, okay, you know, it, I think I'll, that'll work for today, and that's all I have to do. Some days it's a lot more work, and I might take, um, if I'm really trying to do something different, I might take an hour or two to decide what I want. Paper first, 
And then I come over to, before I start, I come over to my practice piece, which I always have a practice piece, and I practice on my swirls. I don't know if you can see, but I've practiced with the yellow uh, swirls on this. And that mm, tells me, yes, the tension looks okay, the white thread on the back is not coming up, everything is great. Then, I'm ready to actually sew. And so, when I'm doing my machine quilting, free motion, I have to have these gloves. And um, they look dirty, but they're not. I, I do wash them from time to time. But they really help me move things around. The other thing I have to have when I'm, I do when I'm, quilting and I'm going to set my um, I'm going to set my needle I usually start over on the side and um, pull a thread up I'm not going to really go into an elaborate uh, like stitches today because I've, I've done that but when I get started I put my needle down I might start over in the edge. See, I've already done some quilting down in here. I don't know if you can see that, but I usually start somewhere that's hard to get into. So if I start there, I've gotten the worst part done. Okay, so I have it there and I hold on and I was getting ready to start today and I thought, oh, you know, something doesn't feel right. Which the last thing I do, and one of the most important things is, I put my chair down just a wee tiny. If you can, that might be too much. But I put it down so that it's comfortable for me. I can see well. I do not have a strict stitch regulator. I can't use them very well. Um, so I just regulate myself. But I regulate better when the chair is a little lower and I can just nicely move my arms. It doesn't tire my, my shoulders out as much. And the, and the final thing I think, my final um, recommendation would be, don't worry so much about every little stitch. Kind of think ahead and just a lot of times music will help but just relax it will be what it is and it's not going to be perfect but when someone's looking at this they're not going to see if one stitch is smaller than another stitch you'll you'll do much better the more practice that you have so those are my tips on quilting a uh, flower hug